Hi there. My sister paid us a visit recently. Doesn't happen that often. It was so nice to see her. And while she was here, she was admiring this piece. And she asked me what kind of wood the finial is. And I told her it's maple, just like the vessel itself. And she asked me how I got it black. Now, as you can see, it is maple. So I explained what I did to make it black. And I have tried ebonizing before. There's a recipe where you can use steel wool, dissolve it in vinegar for a few days, then paint it on the wood and it darkens a bit. But the best I ever got was maybe a dark gray. Anyway, I didn't think that was good enough and I looked for a few other systems, different ways to do it. And I finally came on this by myself. Uh, I'm sure other people are using the same technique I can't believe I'm the only one to think of something this simple. So if you'd like to stick around, I'll show you how I'm going to turn a finial and then how I'm going to ebonize it. And if you're too bored with me to watch the finial being turned, skip to the last three or four minutes and see the ebonizing. Hope you'll stick around. This knot does not go all the way through, obviously. I'm just hoping it doesn't go in there too deeply. You never know until you've turned it away. All right, I'll just reverse this into a chuck. All right, I'm gonna start to thin this down a little. I've got no set length that I really wanna keep, but I certainly would like more than this, so we'll see at what point that'll disappear. Now I wanna point out this is cutting fairly roughly. And just like any other woodworking, you have to pay attention to the grain. If it's not perfectly straight, you can get roughness, and yet if you go the other direction, it should clean it up. I'll just try that. Yes, not perfect, but it's much better than what it was. Well, while this didn't go all the way through, it certainly is getting close to halfway.
That's really hanging in there. This is going to be awfully thin if I ever even get to finish it. That's extremely close to right on halfway through. I'm going to do a little bit up here before it's too thin to do anything at all and hopefully come back and do something on this. Alright, this is starting to get quite thin in here. Putting my fingers on there did help quite a bit with keeping the vibration out of it. I'm really not sure what to expect here, but I know I'm not going to get back up in here. It's going to be too thin, so I'm going to sand this just down to here and then see what happens in this area. Alright, I'm going to start sanding at 180. And I'm going to go through the grits to 400. I don't expect you to stick around and watch all of that, so I'll just edit most of this out. I'm turning in reverse so that the dust is carried away from me. I try to make sure that I keep the sandpaper moving back and forth all the time. If I let it sit in one spot, I might create a flat. And when there's some, even a little bit of a curve like that, you don't want to lose that. I want to take some of the bulk off of here now. I don't want to be making too aggressive cuts once this is down even thinner than it is. So I'll take some of this bulk away before I get down here. <laughs> Still a ways to go. This is getting nerve-wracking.
getting there now. Perhaps the most important thing when cutting something this thin is to make sure you have a very sharp gouge. I'm just going to take a second to hone mine and I'll be back. <laughs> it's just not going away. Well, I think that little bit there that's going to go all the way through practically, and it's just going to get too thin. So I'm going to sand this, and I'm hoping that when I use the ebonizing, it's going to hide that. I don't know if it will absorb it well or not. Anyway, I will sand this again, and I'll be back. Anytime I have to make a real delicate cut, I like to clean the dust out of the flute, so that as soon as it starts to show a little dust, I'll know that I've got a cut going, even before I can see it or feel it making the cut. I'm going to be using a half inch open end wrench just to size the tenon I'm going to put on here using my parting tool. Now this is not a keeper. I really do not like this, how it goes from small here to larger at the top. This is one I made a few years ago just practicing and I much prefer coming down very narrow and then finishing up like this. I don't care for this much at all. So I'm just using it to demonstrate the ebonizing. But I'm going to put a tenon on here and then we'll see what happens with it when I part this off and I ebonize this part. I'm just going to sand this end. I will start at 180 grit and I will sand this up to 400 and then I will be back. Alright, now I'm ready to ebonize this. To ebonize this, which just means make it black, I'm just using a black Sharpie marker. And I'm not trying to promote Sharpie, it just happens to be the brand name that I find locally. Now I'm turning this down as low as my lathe will go, 100 RPM. And I'm just going to apply the black from the Sharpie marker all the way down. Thank you. 
I often have to go over two or three times until I'm satisfied that it's black enough. I will let it dry for quite a while, at least overnight, and then I will put wipe on poly over top of it. Now I'm going to let that dry overnight and then come back and put a finish on top of it tomorrow. I'm using Wipe On Poly now and I'm wearing nitrile gloves. I'm becoming more and more conscious of the safety aspect of using some of these things. And I'm just going to apply this with this shop towel. I'm using the gloss and while it's wet it certainly looks great but of course often when things dry that great look kind of fades away so we'll have to see how this turns out. I'm using a dry section of the towel just to try to take away some of the little bits that I can see are in here and shouldn't be. Put a little more on. May have been some dust on that one side of the towel. Alright, so far that's looking pretty good to my eye. I will let that dry, possibly come back and do another coat. And then I'll be back to show you the results. And there it is. And I think it turned out all right. It's not perfect. I didn't take a lot of time to properly eponize it and then put the wipe on poly on, but I'm pleased with it. And it was just a demonstration. I'm sure you can do a better job if you want to try one. So thank you for joining me. I hope you learned something or enjoyed something about this video. If you decide to try this, let me know what you think. Thanks again for stopping in. Have a great day in your shop and be safe. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button, share it with your friends if you like, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that. I hope you'll come back next time. Take care now.